Okay, so we're moving through our layers here, making refinements and blending it as we go. And it's always good to kind of know what comes on top because you, then you see what gets covered up, right? So I still need to work on this little ridge from this background layer. And that's why we need at least five references, but doing a lot more major assets than five can be a real headache because cleaning them up well takes time and attention. And again, zooming in, usually I'll start at 100%. And then never more than 200%. Because this is already kind of pushing what the, the human eye will see in a print. And I do like the magic wand. You know, we did a lot of that last class. But when it comes to your refined edges, being able to, to use that lasso and select things clearly, whether there's a, a, a feather or not, is going to really help you out. And now as we get down into the valley again, I'm going to lasso it, but instead of just deleting it, I'm going to use that as kind of a stencil to protect my mountain side. And then I'm going to use that soft edged eraser to start blending it. If I want to add to my selection, just hold down shift and I can extend it. Oops. <laughs> so professional quality use of raster programs in Photoshop has a lot to do with taking the time to get good selections and practicing with the tablet and stuff in order to be able to get really clean selections. Okay, now if I use my eraser, everything's already a soft edge, so I'm going to go at this 50% and start kind of blending it. And I can deselect. And then I can see where I need to go in individually at maybe even a lower opacity. And the tighter detail I need, the smaller I can make my brush. And this kind of mixes the colors from the overlapping layers, why it's good to have a lot of overlap. It's your landscape. You can shape it to be what you want it to be. Oh, see, that's too strong, so I'm going to take that lasso. And low opacity, start biting away. These edges. Okay. 
And this is just our first assignment, so we do not need to be pros at this yet. We're going to be practicing these skills over and over again for different purposes. All right. Not too bad. Now let's move on to the next layer. So as you get closer to the foreground, the edges are going to get a little bit cleaner. And the contrast might get stronger. But make sure you're affecting the right layer as you go. Sometimes I'll lock my layers as I go. Makes things easier. But be careful of these little trails that tools like the magic wand can leave. They look like little shooting stars going through your design. Sometimes you have to find those. And if I zoom in, I can see this little road winding through. It's kind of interesting but they're so tiny in the full scope of it. So I don't want to get obsessed with that. All right. I can always move my guides as well to just change the framing of my sketch a little bit whenever I feel like I need to. And what else do I need to blend in with this? I think it's it's okay for now. Got this kind of misty part here, and then what goes on top of that is this guy. This guy needs a little bit more refinement. Again, the magic wand left this kind of debris behind. Make sure to trim that out. Oh, we're going to be on the right layer. And then all this stuff gets covered up by what comes in front of that. So you can see this kind of electric blue halo. That's what the magic wand left. So I'm just going to cut well inside of that with my one pixel feather. And I can do it in chunks. So getting a lot of practice cutting things out with the lasso whoops and being on the right layer there we go I'm zoomed in, not even at 100%, but this should be good enough. I can kind of shake my hand a little bit if I want it to be a little bit bumpier. Not so smooth. But again, a tablet really helps. Another trick is, once you've made the selection, you can actually move the selection and then kind of use it as a stencil for erasing or cookie cutter. Little brass elements here, very jagged. 
And I could try to go in with a magic wand and get all that blue. But that would be a big headache. I can actually kind of composite my own grass edge just by kind of cutting in. And erasing from it. Back and forth scribbling there. That one pixel feather really makes it a lot more believable. And then there are power lines, but they're going to be cropped off when I finish, com uh, <laughs> finish cropping it. And then in the last 20 minutes or so before we turn in what we have, I'm going to show you some of the kind of special effects we have with compositing. They're called texture overlays, but you have to have everything kind of roughly placed. It's a finishing technique that's really helpful. And remember, you can always use your soft-edged eraser, too. Now, do I want this tree? Probably not. Let's have it go into shadow there. It's going to have this kind of trim out. <laughs> or it might be nice to kind of internally composite something. So internally composite means you take something from a layer you've already brought in, but just one element like this tree. I don't want those power lines, right? But I duplicate it, Command-J onto a new layer. And then I move it somewhere where it's more useful to me. I might even transform it, rotate it a little bit. I know the coloring matches and the lighting matches, but I can play with the scale. You know, make it a little bit stronger. It's nice to kind of break the border there. And then I can use all these techniques to blend it in, like my magic wand. Holding down shift, giving these whites and blues. Deleting. And then using my lasso and cutting around it. This is why I like to composite my concept settings mostly with organic material instead of man-made structures. It's because man-made structures require a lot of very precise cutting. And sometimes I'll even use the shape selection tools like the rectangular marquee, you know, to cut out. So if this is a skyscraper, I might do that to cut an edge rather than this hand-drawn lasso. So it just depends on what you're needing. And then sometimes there's little undercuts oops, that need to be taken out too. And then I can play with the direct adjustments on it, just play with the lighting and the coloring. Because even though it matched in one position in that layer, maybe in, in another position it doesn't match quite as well. <laughs> 